Hi, for my final project, I'll be talking about navigating copyright in the age of digital access. What would happen if you discovered your artworks were out on the web gaining recognition, only the accolades were not for you? Such was the case with this image uh, when a, when, um, a, a um, social media user claimed this image as his own uh, in, a, in a contest. He submitted it in a contest and it won. Uh, in June, social media user Bob Dan won Samsung's Live in the Moment Instagram Photography Contest. And the prize was a camera. And the only problem was the, ca the photograph was not his own. The original photo was by a uh, well-known photographer, Henke Cohen Juro. And, and Cohen Juro's image was lifted off the web and altered by user Bogdan, who flipped the orientation and applied one of the uh, Instagram filters. As you can see, uh, the original was in black and white, and the stolen image uh, was uh, made to look uh, foggy and eerie with um, this filter applied to it. And so when this was discovered, it was, uh, it was reneged, and Samsung did make an apology and removed the picture from um, all social media sites, and it did get a lot of press. But this was a good example of uh, the Internet giving and the Internet taking away. Um, now, in this next scenario, um, this... Uh, was a, a well-known story, and I'll let the, the video tell, tell the story to you. It actually started in a weird way, when one day my co co-worker came to me, and she told me, I saw your picture on a shirt this morning on Subway. Why didn't you tell me if you were selling your shirts? And I told her, I have no idea what you're talking about. After six months, I, I went with my friends to a clothing store in Soho. And it was a big surprise that I just saw my face on a shirt. So I picked it up and I was like, okay. So, she was right. I had no idea it would be so big. And it just became huge without me knowing about it. I found this, like, the picture in about 30 or 40 countries around the world. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll find more much more than that. I took this picture in 2006 and I posted four pictures out of the set on Flickr the same day. And I started getting a lot of views and a lot of comments on Flickr. So after about six months, I decided to go back to the same folder and see if I missed anything. I, I saw this one picture that I was like, okay, this is a good picture. I should, I should post it. This was the picture that got so big from both. One day I got an email from the editor of one of the magazines in Chile and she told me we used your picture in our magazine and we wanted to thank you for the picture. She never asked me before. She used it, but I guess she tried to be nice and you know and show me what they did with it. And yeah, so this this was the copy of the magazine. It was my first face publication, I guess. I, after being published on in the Chile magazine and being on shirts, I got an email from National Geographic 
and they told me they want to license my picture. Glimpse magazine is National Geographic magazine for politics and anything related to that. And they made this magazine for the presidential election in 2008. And they called it Power to the People, the Face of Democracy. This was actually my only paid gig with my picture. As you can see in the video, uh, Na Naom uh, discovered that his image had been used numerous times without his permission. It wound up uh, being reproduced on posters, advertisements in Argentina, German, Germany, Brazil. Uh, the image uh, was used and continues to be used for t-shirts, skateboard and playing cards, art, um, it, it crossed uh, international uh, barriers. Naom's screaming face has been graffitied larger than life onto walls and sidewalks in Montreal, Rome, Mexico City, and London. And he only was compensated once. Um, so he, he does do photography as a living, so this really would qualify as a worst case scenario. Now, from, from this case, um, it gets better. This next um, case uh, shows several images that made the front page news uh, after the Haiti earthquake in 2010. A native Daniel Morel, a professional photographer, was in Haiti at the time doing uh, work and um, these images uh, were used without his permission. And again, um, I'll, I'll share the video with you because this actually uh, turned into a, a good story um, after uh, he won a lawsuit that awarded him for uh, the copyright infringement. to send photo out of Haiti during the quake. That was my first picture, you know, the lady with the white face, you know. This picture mean a lot to me because this is only people I know. This is only victim I know, you know, and they were very friendly. Yeah. On January 12th, I was over at my friend's studio trying to help his students to open a Facebook for their artwork. I worked there for about half an hour, taking all the nice pictures of their work. And about the time I was going to leave, it's a big sound. It's like, uh, uh. it was very frightening. Because the noise, whenever I heard any noise like that, the earth was going like a wave. Inside, everything was, everything was upside down in the lap. Big giant statue, you know, it was all over the place. So I was trying to photograph the damage inside where I was. You know. They didn't have no idea what was going on in the street, you know, really. Nothing like that came to my message. The street was destroyed. When I got outside, people were yelling, like, yelling, like, you know, like, Chris been bombed, you know, and they're looking for, they're going, they don't know where they were going. The lady, Quash, she's a great vendor. She, she died in the building. Over her. My father used to sell bread to these people. You know, I mean, 
they become like my family. You know? The panic. The panic was very emotional to me. Some people lost their men. They don't know if their house is still there. You know, I was in you know, a real panic. I was shooting both sides of the street. Center, this way, this way. Keep on shooting and try to get the most I can get before the light went down. I grew up in the neighborhood. Everybody know me, you know? So, they didn't even see me, you know? I mean, I just keep on working. I was not trying to get something special. Even all those iconic pictures, I was not looking for good pictures. I was shooting. The woman under the rubble, I took a sequence, you know, I got her hand, I got her half grip, and I got people carrying her. I was trying not to put too many dead people in my work. I was trying to show the, the struggle for surviving, the struggle of, you know, of the people, you know. The other photographers, when they came, you know, they're not interested in the Haitian struggle. They're more interested in the easy things, fellow soldiers, like helicopter. Following those international aids when they come, you know. to me, is that news? I cover the other side of the story. It's very important to note that um, Daniel Morell's winning case. Um, winning this landmark case was really um, a victory for, for many um, photojournalists and artists everywhere because um, the how the image uh, was shared uh, on Twitter um, and got picked up by Getty and um, AFP, a, a picture agency, um, Twitter was not held responsible because according to Twitter's terms of service, um, sharing is fine, but not for commercial use. So the moment that um, Getty and AFP started um, uh, selling that image and making money off of it, they were uh, infringing upon um, Morel's copyright. So it's important to um, to know what what um, copyright is and what it covers. So copyright will cover uh, works that um, can be uh, written works, uh, literature, can be photographic in nature, can be video, can be music, um, artworks such as illustration and graphic design and even computer code. So um, if you are a, um, a, an artist or a, a writer or anybody that's producing works, um, it's important to know um, that, that those works um, should be covered by copyright and you should familiarize yourself with um, what that entails. So the do's and don'ts of copyright. One thing is you need to self-declare your works. Um, anything that um, is published does automatically become covered, but it, it's helpful if you always use the, um, the copyright symbol 
whenever you're um, posting that work on the internet. Now it won't guarantee you protection because as long as there's a screen that somebody can do a screen share, you run the risk that somebody can lift your image as we've seen in that um, Instagram case. Um, to make copyright more official, um, it, it would be uh, advisable to actually uh, register your copyrights. And, and that is, is a legal document uh, proving that the works are in fact um, original and belonging to you. Um, also, know your terms of service for each social media platform that you post work to. Um, it's very important to know uh, what, you know, what can potentially happen. The social media sites by nature are for sharing, but typically, as we've seen in the Daniel Morell case, if, um, it's, if somebody is sharing your work um, just as a, uh, for a social media share, that's one thing, but the minute they make uh, money off of it, that's something else. Now, uh, unfortunately for that, um, the screen uh, story, he didn't pursue it because it just, it sort of went viral on him, but it, it is now known that that, you know, the source of all of that, uh, those works um, really came from his original uh, piece. And that, um, <clears throat> the other thing to know are licensing terms because um, if you do sell your images, you need to know what uh, the distinctions are. Um, RF is royalty free, um, RM is rights managed, and ER is exclusive rights. Within each of those terms, they mean different things, and, and they each will carry a different monetary amount. So it's important to um, familiarize yourself with uh, what the lingo is and um, what the potential earnings are uh, where you distribute your work. Now, because there's such proliferation in the market with uh, digital, in the digital uh, world we live in now, um, doesn't mean that you, uh, it has lowered the value of some pictures, but not, you know, for professional people that, you know, shoot lots and lots of images, they are making money. And, and so um, not to be discouraged, um, there is money to be made. Um, for appropriation, that's when uh, a work will uh, start with an original source image and then uh, become something else. And that is commonly known as a derivative work. Um, for cases like that, a famous case um, that I wrote about earlier in the semester, the Sh uh, Shepherd Ferry um, Obama poster, that was an, uh, um, uh, uh, an appropriated uh, piece of artwork. And by the way, Shepard Ferry lost that case because he basically lifted a picture without sourcing that picture um, to the AP photographer, and he lost that case in, in a lawsuit. So it's important to know, um, you know, as you go about and you uh, venture to create works, um, the right way to do things. And I would strongly recommend familiarizing and use sites that don't allow high resolution downloads, such as Flickr. Flickr, if you are a Flickr user, you have administrative uh, tools that you can prevent people from downloading the high resolution version. For that matter, if you're just uploading it to a website, maybe you don't need, even need to put a high resolution image up there. Again, there's always the option that people can do a screen share, but I guarantee they cannot make um, big posters out of something that's only 72 DPI. So um, lastly, I would say to employ image search methods such as the tineye.com or a reverse, you know, Google images search to see if your images are being used without permissions. If you are in the market of being, uh, you know, creating original works, it's to your own best interests to know um, what these, uh, what copyright means and what the tools are 
that will help you protect your original works. And the last um, slide are just the sources that I use to put together the presentation. I hope you've learned a little bit about copyright. Um, it's, it's a constant um, eye-opener. And um, I think as, as more people use the web, I think people are getting savvier and, and want to know that what's theirs is, is protected. And, and, and I hope this presentation has helped to clarify that. Thank you.